All right, let's go out to Edmonton, Canada and talk to Elaine. What's up, Elaine? Um, the sky. <laughs> <laughs> well, well played, Elaine. Well played. <laughs> I hope that felt good. Hope that. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Um, well, um, so my husband recently had a psychotic break, um, ended up in a um, mental facility for a couple of weeks. Um, he's now out. Um, how do I help him work through some of the craziness of that time? And how do I and our kids deal with what happened? Yikes, it's scary. Tell me about it. What happened? Um, sorry. It's okay. Take a breath. Take a breath. You're all good. Did it happen in your home? Um, sort of. Um, so hold on. I, I just want to acknowledge for everybody. If you've never been around this, if you've never, um, seen somebody that you care about have a psychotic break, or if you've never been with somebody, it's terrifying, right? It's like out of a movie, scary, scary, scary stuff. And you see the person that you love and care about right in front of you and they are gone and it is scary, right? Yeah. Like, um, one of the nurses in the first second hospital we went to um like she said you just can't make this stuff up like you just can't um hey do me a favor um, lane you talk directly into the phone for sorry. me okay that's okay that's okay yeah no i have it away from my ear okay, yeah <laughs> anyways um so yeah so he there's been a lot of uh stressors over the last few years but particularly in the last uh couple months um and so, like, I would say it was brought on by lack of sleep. You talk about how important sleep is. I cannot stress that enough. Um, in the end, he was sleeping maybe between one and a half to three hours a night, living on caffeine and energy drinks. Um, not a good thing. Yeah, that's a tough... Uh, that's a tough so, uh... Yeah. That's tough for your body to um, handle. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, so give a little bit of history. He had lost he he'd lost his job due to COVID at the end of twenty one. Um, got a new the job in twenty two, ended up getting laid off from that one in January of twenty three oh, and had just started a new job in March and it was um it was a good job, but very, very stressful. Right. He enjoyed it, but like I say, there was a lot of stress around it. Um, and that was just one of multiple things. And um, Canada has been so particularly last, difficult over the last few years, right? Yeah, we won't even go there. Well, I, <laughs> here's like, I, I, um, some psychotic breaks are, are brought on by like a schizophrenic diagnostic, right? It, and it's not the diagnosis that does it, but you have a schizophrenic mind um, or you've got some, some alterations in your neurochemistry in your brain, right? Other right. psychotic breaks are brought on by you don't sleep for two months and you live off, you know, uh, adenosine antagonists. You live off caffeine and it makes you, um, it alters the reality of your brain, right? And one day you wake up and it's your, you've, to, an ugly way of saying is that you snapped, right? And your body checks out. It, it loses touch with reality over time. And so and there's, and there's a long spectrum in between that. But what's important is also there's a context. There is an, and there's an ecosystem where this is all taking place. And we, we often forget that, right? It's like the couple who calls yeah. or the, the, the mom who calls and says, um, my marriage is falling apart. And then they tell me they have four kids under the age of seven. Well, it's like, well, if, <laughs> it's not your marriage in falling apart. Your house is insane. And so being in Canada <laughs> over the last three years has been really, really hard. And if you are listening to this going, what? I don't know anything about that. Just go back and check it out. There's been all this government clash. If you think California is bad, what, they, what Canada's had to endure has been madness. And you put that on top of a bunch of job loss on top of, on top of, on top of. And now you get a recipe, right? For yeah. You lose your husband. So what when he went to the psych ward, staying staying at a ward for two weeks tells me there was some pretty significant things going on. That wasn't just a three day get some sleep and get some food in you and 
let's get you a, yeah. like a, a, yeah. a, a treatment plan at home. What was going on? Well, going into that, the last, I would say I noticed things going off the rails for him the last week before. But of course, we've never been through this before. Um, We've been married almost 36 years. So it's not like, you know, I didn't know him or anything. Um, And so, yeah, the last week things started getting very odd, very weird. And then he went to, on the weekend, it was, things started really going off the rails. He kind of lost it on me, which in a way that isn't normal for him whatsoever. Um, but when he got, and, to, when he got and, to the, when he got to the hospital, did they give him a diagnosis of anything? Well, no, see, he left work early on the, on the Monday and then he was talking to me on the phone and then he kind of went off the grid. We had no idea where he was. Okay. Um, eventually he was, <laughs> climbing on a ledge and stuff in a car wash. And so they called 911 and the cops and he had no ID on him and got to the hospital and I'm looking all over for him. I thought I knew where he'd gone, but he hadn't got there out to this remote place where he wanted just some time alone. Um, and so he was in the hospital for about two hours, I think before I got a call. Um, and then uh, when I got there, he had been sedated. And when he came to, he was mostly himself, like not 100%, obviously. Um, the doctor came in, talked to him for a bit. Yeah, originally, they said they were going to have a psych eval done. And then he released him to me um, because he was doing so well. The moment he said they were going to release him, he started going off a little bit. Um, but we went home and, you know, knowing that sleep is an issue, he went to sleep. And then, um, this sounds really odd, but he'd been walking around in fields for like three hours before that. And so just as he went to sleep, discovered some ticks. And so like the insect mm-hmm. ticks. <laughs> and so started dealing with that. And of course, then he was woke up and, um, he, started panicking. It's not safe. It's not safe. Can't be here. It's not safe. And our one son lives just, we have an acreage, but we're on the edge of town. And our son lives basically a couple doors down and he took off running and went to his house. So ulti- oh, wow. ultimately he was put back in the hospital for an extended stay. Did they give him a diagnosis of yeah. bipolar disorder, of schizophrenia? It would be a strange to be no. this late, but... They ultimately just yeah, said I, he, he needed some sleep. He burned himself out completely, just detached from reality for a while. They did toss around bipolar a little bit, but um, it, it doesn't really stick, the diagnosis, because it's not like going back, right? So right. Well, t- tell me, tell me, I'm trying to get to how I can help you now. So yeah, when, when they yeah. discharged him, what did they tell you? Well... Uh, that's a very difficult question to answer because I was never allowed to actually meet with the doctors. Um, I, Did he not sign a release? He signed a release, but I don't think it says in there anything about bipolar. Um, well, well, so it, here, here's here's step one, okay? Mm-hmm. If If he is on the same page with you, is he on the same page with you? Yes. Okay. He needs to contact his mental health provider, the doctors who are with him. And I don't know how Canada's system works. They would have given you a social worker here in the States to help you navigate everything. So whenever one of my students would go into a psych ward, I would go sit. And the first person I would talk to is the social worker who helps them navigate all the different doctors and people coming in and out. Um, And have him sign a release that says, I need you to tell my wife everything that you found and to walk her through what my next steps can be. So she can be, and here's the magic word, she can be an advocate for me. And Yeah, I, I did, was able to talk with a social worker involved. Okay. Um, but when I would start asking some of the more medical side of things, uh, she wasn't as clear as what I've 
could have hoped for. So it, he, he did sign a release when he was there so that I could get information and our oldest son as well. Okay. Um, so I would re I would reestablish a meeting with her now that he's been home for a little bit and ask her some very pointed questions. Very direct. Um, how many hours a night should he sleep? Should he have access to the internet? Is, is caffeine completely off the table? It, like, let, make them, with as kind as you can be, make them give you a outpatient treatment protocol. And that's okay. the magic words. Outpatient treatment protocol. You are his advocate. You're walking alongside him. And they might say he needs to go see a counselor. He's had a lot of job loss, which is very tough. He's had a very tough run of it in the last few years. Um, and so what we're going to do is, we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up with the plan. The second thing is, both you and him have to recognize the free fall terror that is losing control of your own body. It's yeah. scary to see that in yourself, to think, I did what? I did all those things and the police are describing where they got you and you have no memory of that. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, or he has a little bit of a memory and it terrifies him. And then for you, he's your rock. He's the guy. And if he can suddenly find himself climbing on top of a car wash and not know how he got there, the question you're, you're suddenly the ice, I mean, the sidewalk you walk on, it becomes very thin ice, right? It's, it's hard to put your foot down. I don't want to set him off. I don't want to do the wrong thing. What do I say? What do I do? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Does, that, does that sound right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you have this plan together, the second step is y'all build a new marriage. How long? 36 years in? Is that what you said? In a couple of weeks. Yep. Yeah. Congrats. This is a perfect time. Now you can build something completely new with the knowledge that, hey, man, like you found out how far you can be pushed and we found it. I'm glad we were grateful that we know this. Who are we going to become now? And you, you might become people who turn the TV off at 4 p.m. And y'all just sit on the front porch and talk to each other and play cards and whatever. You might become people who take walks every day and y'all are both in bed with the lights out at nine o'clock and you used to never be there. You used to be out dancing. Well, this is a new thing we're building now. Does that make, do you see what I'm saying? And let give him a yeah. content. We're a couple who every night we check in with each other. How are you feeling today? What are you thinking today? And you just give each other a few minutes of space to talk. He, so normally the things that are highly, highly therapeutic, therapeutics, kind of a dramatic word are healing at home after these moments are things like skin to skin contact. Things like I want to mm -hmm. hold your hand for um, 30 seconds every morning and I want to hold your hand 30 seconds when you get home from work. I just want to hold you. Can I just hug you for 30 seconds and we'll count it out. The reason I'm hesitating to give you anything like that is I, that might be what sets off his psychosis. And so without looking at the doctor's report, it's I, I don't want to give you a bunch of things to do. I think the key will be him having the courage to tell you what he needs on a given day and you having the bravery and courage to listen to him and then to love him. And here's the hard part. You tell him what you need and don't treat him with a glass slipper. Do the opposite. Give him some purpose and a role inside that house and it will anchor him. See what I'm saying? And that's hard right now. It's very hard because you, you want to, you want to, touch everything with a velvet glove, right? You want to be very careful not to set anything off. And if I just say the wrong thing or move the wrong thing. And what that does is that puts his body back on high alert because the one anchor he's got is you and you're acting different. You're acting scared and anxious. And, and so it, it just becomes this, this repeating cycle here. Whereas you say, Hey, I love you. And, and when you take the trash out, can you help me out? That can be such a gift. See what I'm saying? Yeah, hey. like right now, like we, we've had some of those discussions, you know, where I've told him like, I'm on high alert for him, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't ever want to go down this path again. He doesn't want to go down this path again. Um, it was pretty traumatic to stay in there. That's right. Um, there Ter was some terrifying in there. Yes. Yeah, like as he says, it's a very dark Place yes, it's a scary dark place. And yes, it is. It is, and you know, there's 
there's good that has come of it already um, in terms of, you know, him understanding more being more compassionate toward people who are dealing with stuff like that. Yeah, but that's all external. And he needs to be very compassionate is. with him. Yeah, and I think he's finally getting there to where good. he is being more open with himself. And, and, you know, I've listened to your show for quite a while, and you talk about, you know, asking your spouse, what do you need from me? Mm-hmm. And I have asked that over and over, and he often says, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, and I've noticed he's starting to be able to say those things. Excellent. This is what I need right now. And so let me say it's this, huge. and this is for you and for everybody, and that's awesome. And you kept, sh- and here, look, here's the important thing. You kept showing up, and you kept showing up, and you kept showing up. Most people will say, what do you need today? I don't know, man, I don't know. Hey, how can I love you today? I don't know. And then they never ask again. And that's not you. You kept showing up, you kept showing up, you kept showing up. And eventually, when he realized, oh, I need a lot, you were there. Because you had laid a, you had laid a, like a brick road that he could walk on. Also. If the question, what do you need, what do you need after a week, after two weeks, if they don't have an answer to that, maybe ask a different question. Put your hand on his chest and say, where are you, where are you tense today? Where are you anxious today? Is it in your shoulders? Is it in your chest? Is it in your forearms? Like, where is it today? Is it on your feet? And tell him where it is on you. And here's all we're doing. We're getting to the base layer because sometimes, um, and I'm guilty of this. Sometimes we turn, um, what do you need today? What do you need today in a transaction of activity? What do you need today? Well, I need this, this, and this. All right, I'll do those three things. What do you need today? I need this, this, and this. All that is great, but that sits, that's not the, that's not the base layer that sits on top of, I see you and I'm with you and I'm here for you. And those three things are so grounding and it makes it very challenging for a body to be in chaos when it is connected with other people in that rooted way. And so it may be, uh, what do you need today? What do you need today? What do you need today? Man, where are you? So maybe you you shift the question. Where are you scared today? What are you scared about today? What do you really, give me one thing. You got to give me one thing you're really excited about today. What is one hot romantic thing we can do today? You get one and I get one. What is one physical activity we can do today? Like begin to branch it out a little bit and give him some, um, some cues there. But all of this, let's be clear. All of this is going to stem from all of these activities at home are going to stem from you going back to the, the social worker and really pressing on an outpatient treatment plan. What, based on y'all's expertise, all these doctors and all these tests and two weeks in a psych ward, well, I don't know how it is in Canada, in the U.S. would be very expensive because there would be a million different um, professionals that came in and out of there. Um, In y'all's expertise, what are some things that my husband needs? And you and him go away and build, like, just dream together. We got scared. We got scared. Woo! We made it. We're here. We're back. Here's my promise to you, Elaine. Walking around all tense, arms clenched, hands clenched, chest clenched, heart clenched is a recipe for a very anxious house. And the goal here is to create a non-anxious house. Okay, non-anxious house. So um, hang on the line here. I'm going to send you two decks of both of the couple's questions for humans. And this is just something you and him can do. Y'all can make a ritual out of it. And there's 52 cards in each deck. This can get you 104 days. And every day you can just sit down and agree to do one card together over, uh, I was going to say over coffee, probably not, over <laughs> over warm warm water and chamomile tea. But y'all can have this conversation together. And it's and again, we are bridging back to one another. We're going to follow this pl- treatment plan and we're going to figure out creative ways to ask each other, how can I love you today? What does that look like? What does it feel like? What does that taste like? How can I love you today? He is really, really lucky to have you. Elaine, I know this is a scary, scary, scary season. And I hate that for y'all. If you've never been to a psych ward, folks, it is a scary, dark place. And it's scary when you lose trust in your own body. It's scary when you lose trust in the person who is the anchor of the family. 
And this is the moment when you can, you can do one of two things. You can walk away from the collapse of the buildings or y'all can exhale and be sad and grieve it and then ask yourselves, what are we going to build next? <laughs>